on sale this month from our daddy, the Magic Order issue two. Nemesis Reloaded, issue two, art by superstar Jorge Hermenes. And Nightclub issue three for the staggering price of $1.99. Starting in March, also my birthday. The Ambassadors, a six-pack series from, uh, from Dad and the six biggest artists in comics. Frank Quitley, Carl Keschel, Travis Charé, Oliver Kuppel, Matteo Bufkini and Matteo Scalera. The world's first superhero has been created, but, he's not metrop- but she's not Metropolis or Gotham City. She's in Korea and she wants to share powers with the best of people from every major country. This is Willy Wonka with superpowers. Don't miss it. I'm just using my uh, iPad audio. Is that okay? It's perfect, honestly. I mean, I've got a bad picture, bad sound, and no idea what I'm doing, you know, so you're, you're streaking uh, ahead of me. <laughs> right now, it sounds great. Fantastic. That's great. No. So, I haven't seen you for ages, actually. Isn't it? You know what's I, nice about doing these is I get to catch up with pals, you know, mm-hmm. for, for no real reason. You know, it's nice just to get a little chat, you know, because we all haven't seen you for so long, you know. I know, I know. Thank you so much for, for you know, for having me in mind. I, I miss you. And uh, thank you, you know. And I, I'm very happy that you're, you know, you're you're getting, you're, you know, you're busy and you're doing all these stuff. And uh, it's crazy. And, uh, isn't it? You know, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's funny because, um, you know, when we sold the company and everything, you know, I remember sort of thinking, maybe I'll kick back now, you know, and, and I find myself doing things like this for free, you know, like I just enjoy it, you know. You know, what's been really yeah. good as well is like, because we all haven't been to conventions for ages, um, mm-hmm. it's quite nice that international chat again, isn't it? Like, and I feel as if, yeah. I mean, I talk about this quite a lot, that the comics industry doesn't really have that oral history the way the music industry has and the film mm-hmm. industry has. There's not that many. Yeah series of interviews with all of us isn't there so i can i i like having this all on record yeah. oh that's great that's great and I, I hope i can give you some good content but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know i've got a brutal hangover it's uh normally um i do these in the evening but because of the time difference mm-hmm. with manila um mm-hmm. i think what well, it must be about what 7 p.m for you right now 7 15 or something? Uh, 7 7 15 yes 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 because yes, for me that's it's 8, 11 a.m in the morning and i i oh. never i'm never up this early on a sunday so i was out last night <laughs> And I don't know, I've got a really bad time over only a couple of bottles of wine, nothing major, you know, but like uh, it's hit me today, you know. So, <laughs> so what, what about you? What have you been up to today? Oh, I'm just, uh, for today, I'm, it's a Sunday, so I'm just resting and just, you know, watching some some TV and stuff like that. Right. But usually I'm um, I'm just doing coverage for Marvel lately, so I haven't been doing interiors right. since uh, uh, since X-Men. So, yeah, taking a bit slow, taking a bit slow, because COVID Loving the life. Stuff. Loving the life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thanks to you, thanks to you. I've, I've recovered from my uh, cocaine addiction. And, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you should have but, gone from cocaine to heroin. Now, now you've got more money oh, yeah, to heroin. You're doing you this. <laughs> <laughs> but look, look at all the. Uh, I mean, that's a nice little collection of books behind you. Is that mostly your oh, own, or is it a mix of everything? Or I don't know. Those are just uh, a mix of references, my own comic books, and yeah. stuff Marvel. Yeah. So <laughs> you do what I did. Like I, I went through I, I periodically go through my things and get rid of things I don't like, you know. So I try to like my DVD collection, I still have one, mm-hmm. you know. My DVD <laughs> collection is just the great movies, you know. So uh-huh. Indiana Jones 4 never happened, Matrix 2 never happened, you know. Okay. I, clean out and just keep, I keep my graphic novels just the really great graphic novels as well. Or do, yeah. do you just have a bit of everything behind you? Yeah. I, I, will, I will be doing that because I'll be moving to another place um, in a co- couple of months. So I'll be really, you know, um, starting from scratch. I'm oh. going to just bring what I want. The toys, you know, I'll just have a couple of toys in my studio, not, that, not a collection. So I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll start that as well. Yeah. <laughs> I, I could easily be the 40 year old virgin you know it's like you know that because <laughs> I do I do get quite excited especially when I see retro toys and I have to kind of restrain myself you know I try and keep mm-hmm. it I try and make it look like an adult's office you know I try and yeah, yeah. not put yeah, too much yeah. up but it's tempting isn't it you know yeah. yeah it is it is it is me too and um yeah I'm um right now because of technology I I only really need an iPad and nothing else yeah. you know um, so a studio is really just anywhere in the you know like a coffee shop would be a studio before you need all the stuff, you need all the references, all the books. Yeah. Right now we have Google. You can any reference can be Googled. It's, yeah. it's just a cell phone and an iPad, and you're, you're set. So. Are you are you entirely <laughs> digital now? Then have you gone completely? I, I I am actually. Yeah. I am. 
a bit faster and um, the quality of life I get is, is really the, the improvement uh, in my quality of life. It's immense. Wow. So, yeah. So, like, uh, in terms of doing a page, I mean, how much faster digitally are you than you were when you were down in paper? At least 50% wow. faster. It's really fast. Really? But, yes, yes, yes. Because you lose Especially, like, the app sales, of course, you know. But, of course. Yeah. You know, but you probably make it up in the speed, I guess, you know, so you're doing more it's work. It's more, yes, but I'm also working less. So, it's more like I have more free time. Right. I have more free time. Just, you know, do nothing. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> Enjoy my killer money, you know? <laughs> I sometimes cool. worry I've destroyed the comics industry because, you know, the best the best artists in comics are all so rich now, you know, <laughs> that they don't, they don't need to work. So, But it's really interesting yeah. because some guys yeah. just took a week off and started work again next yeah. week, but some guys yeah. just thought, well, you know, I'm going to have a good quality of life, which is probably more sensible, you know? Like for me, I didn't stop working when 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 we got we got the sale, right? I worked, yeah. I did, man. I I went through the divorce, and I should have stopped by then, you know, just yeah. regroup and stuff. I didn't, I I um I didn't stop working until basically COVID, right. and then I decided, you know what, uh, I might die anytime, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> might as well take it a bit slow. But yes, yeah, but. You've, you've kind of ruined it for a lot of us so thank you mark <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, really, I'm, I'm really very impressed by you though like you have um whatever money we have yeah you have like 20 times or 30 times of it yeah. and yet and yet you keep working i mean how do you do it though <laughs> I, I don't understand that it's crazy because you know we sold whatever it was you know 17 franchises or whatever when you added uh -huh. them all up and I had a yeah, fifty percent yeah. stake in each one. Mm -hmm. You know, the artists and I were off yeah, yeah, yeah. on, on each one. But, but obviously, I you had two of them, which was unusually high. You know, yes, you, yeah. you two. Um, but I, I obviously had all of them. And um, and I remember actually being quite interested in this because we obviously then didn't have to work anymore from a cash point of view. Yeah. None of us did. Um, but um, I realized I didn't do it for the cash. I did it because I really yeah. loved doing it. You know, and no matter what, I know I'll be eighty five and nobody will care. <laughs> and I'll still be doing it because because it's just it's, like stand up comedians have to be standing yeah. even if it's in front of twenty people. Yes, yes, yes. I I have to just put comics together. Even even though I'm right in the heart of Hollywood as an executive and can do anything I uh -huh. want, everything you know, I I prefer comics to ever. It's it's just so fun. It's really you're you're my inspiration. Uh, even after the working together, it's like you get to you still do what you love, and um, I kind of feel ashamed that you know that it turns out that if I have a chance, I, I work less. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, I enjoy drawing, but I'm, I, I'm not a fan of, you know, just grinding every day. And But I did it for 20 plus years. So I guess yeah. maybe it's a uh, different out. But you're you're amazing. Obviously, you're the proof that not everyone's doing for the money, obviously. <laughs> um, but the thing is, uh, you're my inspiration because I, I wish I could just take it easier and just relax. <laughs> like, I, I think you're the smart one here. You know, like I'm... I'm <laughs> busting my guts and even things i don't have to do like the podcast i just love it because i love sitting <laughs> talking comics and you know what's really awesome actually you know the guys we didn't get to meet like you know we've got our peers and we kind of maybe know the guys who are 10 15 years older than us but those yeah, guys yeah. who got around in the 50, the 60s and the 70s that predate us the 80s even it's amazing isn't it you I, I love getting a chat with them what was the marvel office like in 1971 mm -hmm. what was the dc office like in 1978 when superman was coming out <laughs> It's so fun to have those. Yeah, you know? that that would be great. You should do it. You should do it. No, I'm, I'm doing it. That's that's the podcast. Yeah, 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 you know, I'm yeah. I'm working my way around everyone, and I just have to get everyone while we're all still alive. You know, I'm I want everyone <laughs> I I like to be to be on record. You know? That would be great. That would be great. And thank yeah, you for having. Oh, I'm honestly delighted. You know, and, and you know, you're so interesting to me because you um, I remember when you first appeared, right, and it was so fast. Like most people, mm -hmm. writers have maybe five years, 10 years before anyone notices them. Like I remember really good writers can take a while to even emerge because one, they yeah. take a while to get good and to be noticed because artwork you just look at and you know yeah. it's good or it's bad whereas writing sometimes you have to sort of see them develop and see see what's happening. But um but artwork you tend to find faster. But even by those standards, you were fast. It was like Jim Lee. Jim Lee appeared and everybody was like, who the hell is this guy? And then suddenly he was everywhere, you know? And I think you were a bit like that as well, weren't you? I felt as if you hit the ground running like nobody I've ever seen before. 
it's it's really it's really uh, fortunate uh, fortunate opportunities. I I was put in Wolverine, and yeah. that's the key. Wolverine. If if I was put in something else, like any other yeah. book in Marvel, yeah, or any other book than Wolverine and X Men, it would have yeah. have been the same. So it was basically luck. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's really amazing. It, it was I was very lucky. Yeah. But predating that though, because I remember seeing you when you appeared in Wizard. You know, you you, you won the Wizard. Oh yeah. Wizard, didn't you? you know, yeah. and like, yeah. how, what what exactly happened there? Was it just Wizard did a call out, which they would do sometimes for new talent, and you you just sent in portfolio or or what? No, no, no. no. The, the the Wizard. To be honest, I don't want to. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of Wizard. Yeah, I sent artworks to Wizard as a fan, and they yeah. published some, but it didn't have anything to do with me getting hired. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nothing to do with it. I was yeah. hired by first of all before Marvel. I did yeah. one comic book for for a small company. It's called Entity Comics. They right. did Zen Galactic Ninja. I did. I yeah. didn't issue any, and it was nothing came out of it. Yeah. But I got hired by Will Spartacio. Yes. When he started the studio here. And it had nothing to do with Wizard, basically. Yeah. So, so what Wizard did for me was they, because I had published art in Wizard, they yeah. promoted me. Ah, so right. Wizard helped me a lot. And thank yeah. you, Wizard. But I wasn't hired because of Wizard. So it was right. Wills, Wills came to the, to Manila. He hired some guys. Maybe yeah. like there were six of us or something like that. And then I was one of the guys he hired reluctantly because I was aping, I was copying his style. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he hired Jerry first. Yeah. Jerry was inker first. And then Jerry was telling, hey, get this guy, get this guy. I wasn't that good back then, but yeah. But and and I was copying him. And then he trained for for like a year. I was under his studio. You know, yeah. he tried to you know, help me out with my style and stuff like that. I couldn't do the shading. I couldn't do any, you know, the things well. He he yeah. helped me develop it. Yeah. But, sure. So you're what age at this point then? Are you maybe 20 or something? Or? Ah, uh, 18, 19, yes. 18, 19. I mean, so you're 19. right out of, school, out of school straight and uh, working right away? Then? I, I had to stop college. I I was taking up uh, ad advertising. Right. I had to stop because uh, I had a great opportunity. And, uh, you know, I could always go back to, to college anytime. So, yeah. So I still get nightmares that I'm in school and I haven't finished school yet. And I have this, you know, I have this, you know, test until now. It's still my, it's still, it still bothers me. <laughs> but, yeah. I, I'm the same, I dropped out of university and I, I'd say once every five years, I have that same, it's a very famous nightmare, isn't it? You know, and the oh, idea yeah. is you have an exam coming up and you're still oh, at yeah. university and you still haven't, still haven't completed. Yeah. Your, yeah. Your and yeah. I don't have pants. For some reason, I don't have pants. <laughs> but you it's never have pants. Class. You yeah. never have pants. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So but, yeah, it was um. So 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 like, because I I do associate you with Welsey, but I know Welsey's from uh, you know Filipino family, but he didn't live in the Philippines, did he? Had he moved to the states? So no, he, yeah. he was yeah. born. I think he, he's an American. He was born yeah. in um. I'm not sure if it's one of the bases or in Hawaii. I think right. he was born in Hawaii. Right. So yeah, he had still had family in in the Philippines. Yeah. But he's mostly American. I he's think. so good though, isn't he? I mean, I, I've always yeah. loved Chelsea's stuff. He's, he's great. Uh -huh. you know? yes. So, so did you, were you sort of like, because everybody has somebody they admire who they kind of copy at the beginning oh, yeah. of their career. And this goes all the way back to the gold age, isn't it? You know, guys yeah. Yeah. guys look at guys who are better than them, whether it's Alex Raymond's, you know, back in the 30s or whatever, or Kurt yeah. Swan in the 60s, you know, you learn from the feet of masters who you admire, don't you? You know, so you sit and copy their style. So was was he your guy? Was he your kind of... Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Will Will is my guy. Um, he went to when I was in high school. Yeah. He went to Manila. Also promoted. He was. They were still back in X Men back then. So he, yeah, he brought in some X Men pages. Yeah. Um, he showed it on TV because back then there was just really just three channel TV channels, and I saw him yeah. there and promoting. And I was like jumping around. He said, "Wow, there's a career out of drawing. You know, yeah. just uh, doing. I thought I was gonna do ad uh, advertising, or at best, I'd be doing animation. You know, the yes. cartoons. Yeah." yeah. Comic book, so I was really happy, and then you know I followed his work uh, after that, and um, just yeah, I was a big you know Los Portasio fan for sure. And and the fact that he had the Filipino connection and everything, you know, I mean that, mm -hmm. that oh, yeah. suddenly that path feels real. Then doesn't it? You've seen someone yes, yeah. like you do it, you know. And and he went here to yeah. scout for talent as well. Yeah. So yeah. Well, it's funny because Alan Alan Moore, I think, was probably that for all the British writers because mm. you know. Working in America just seemed unthinkable when you live in the UK. But when I was 13, uh -huh. Alan Moore blew up, you know, and suddenly became the Swamp Thing writer and everything. 
And you, you notice there was just a generation of guys behind him, you know, like and then, yes. and then a generation behind that. So one person is like one fish that crawls out onto the land, you know, and, yeah, and suddenly yeah. somebody who's like you doing X Men that that must have suddenly felt real then to you. you know? Yes, yes, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Um, there were because of Wills though, uh, there was a bunch of guys doing comic books around my time as well, and yeah. there was a second batch and so, stuff like that. There's also a studio. Uh, it's called Glass House Studio, who set up shop in the Philippines and hired some talents as well. But yeah, I was one of the um, the, the first batch of Filipinos that um, basically led the second wave because you know the there were there was the eighties you know Filipino yes. those, those were the, as well. So we were like the newer ones, but yeah. we were like the image guys, image comics guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But that that Filipino love affair with American comics is so potent, yeah. though, isn't it? You know, and I, I've yeah. been out and I, I've I've met so many people there who grew, who grew yeah. up reading American comics just like you're growing up in Ohio or something. You know, it's like it's, American mm -hmm. comics are huge in the Philippines, but like, uh, yeah. but you know, like whenever um, you were breaking in, did it feel like it happened really fast for you? Did, were you were you aware of how how rapid your ascent was compared to most people in the biz? Yeah, yeah, I was. Um, it was the number four book at that time. Yeah, and whole comics, and I was. Yeah, it was. I was. I was. I was aware. It's pretty fast. Yeah, yeah, it was really. And I, I went to San Diego a couple of years after, and everyone was yeah. like, shocked that I, they see me there. I never <laughs> had that reaction ever. It was just yeah, it was a very good time there. But in hindsight, though, looking at my work during that time, it's yeah. like it's. I wasn't. You know. It was okay. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't like Joe Madureira level in X Men, you know, yeah. when he's really, you know, it's still, there's still some amateur stuff, but I was just really lucky to get Wolverine, I think. And what was, but, what was that, like 99, around about 99? 90s, no, not, not even 97. That was 97. that, era? yeah, 97, right? Yeah, yeah, 97. I, I think, you know, the stuff you were doing, see the stuff you were doing about, you know, because you, you could see the star quality in your stuff immediately, but I think you, you really you refined it really fast as well. You know, by the time you're doing something like High Roads, which I, oh, I yeah. keep the book you did for Wildstorm, I keep that on my desk. There's a few books I keep on my uh, desk, uh, and I keep that because it reminds me to try and keep a story as visual as possible because it's so beautifully told. You know, where you have a splash page and then you turn over into a double page spread, and it's yeah. just the sense of escalation that it seems to have, and it's it's never visually dull. It just it's always interesting. You know. I, I think it's you. beautiful. You know, it's great coloring as well. It's a great looking book. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Edgar and then, of course, Scott Lobdell. It's uh, yeah. Edgar Tadeo, my colorist, and Jerry inked it, and Scott Lobdell, of course, the writer. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was, uh, yeah. Um, like I said, I was a big fan of Wills, and then, but I'm also a bigger fan of Travis uh, Charest, so, which yes, is one of your... Is. He's, he's I guess, right, absolutely, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, it saddens me that after 20... Five years in the industry, I still can't be as good as the Travis from like ten yeah. years ago. <laughs> it's still like, like the the Wildcats, Street Smart, you know, it still yeah. can't oh. be surpassed. Yeah, it's, so yeah, it's, it's, it is the gold standard. But you know, I mean, I think you're in that rarefied air. I think it's you know, there's you, Frank Quitely, Travis Shere. You know, you're. I mean, that's all the guys I work with, isn't it? I mean, it's because it, I mean, I hate, I, I almost hate having the impeccable taste. Because I can't work <laughs> with somebody who isn't brilliant, you know. But you guys are to me, you're all 10 out of 10, you know, you're all A list, but yeah. but it's good having the humility, isn't it? Because you, that's what makes you strive as well, isn't it? You know, you you want to Thank be better, you. you know. Yeah, it's just uh it's just amazing that you know, to have uh, that high of a standard, even if I can't reach it, it keeps me on my toes. It keeps me, yeah. you know. And um, it's just amazing. I, I saw his pages for you know <laughs> new yeah. pages from you. I sent you them last week. They're great. Yes, yeah. yeah. And congratulations that book. Oh, <laughs> it's amazing. I've wanted to yeah. work with Travis for twenty eight years. I mean, I saw. Oh wow. He did. A, you, do you ever see the very first thing he had published at DC? It was a Flash annual or Flash. I think book. I saw a cover. I think yeah. a cover. Amazing, you know. And and yeah. you knew like you like you or Jim Lee or something. You see the first thing and you're like, yeah. oh, this guy's. Going to be mad. Yeah. What we yeah, did, he was only going to draw 100 pages for the next 10 years, you know. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At first, I, Travis, I, I saw, I thought he was, you know, just a Jim Lee clone. And then, yeah. then I saw his work in Wildcats. And then, oh, yeah. wow, this guy is amazing. This guy is something, you know, different. And then, you know, he became Travis after Wildcats X. <laughs> I know. I mean, 
podcast, basically. Yeah. yeah. But even even Jim started as a Mark Silvestri kind of clone and everything, mm-hmm. you know. And mm-hmm. you know, Neil Adams was was there before Pelson Kevich. You know, you everybody starts somewhere, don't they? And then you you blow up into your own thing, you know. True, true, true. But I mean, I'm curious because that Filipino scene seems lovely. You know, it just seems brilliant. Mm-hmm. I mean, I loved being out there. I loved everybody I met there. It was just a great bunch of guys. Like, oh. is, is there, um, you know, is, is there a big community still, you know, in, in Manila itself? Or have people moved moved away, come to the States and everything, you know? Or are you, um, are you still hanging no, out? No, still, we're still mostly there. I think yeah. there are a few people who went to the States. I think because of the internet, there was no need to move to the States. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And, you know, they are still here. I, everyone's here is still here. Yeah. Um, there's the, yeah, there's, yeah, we're, we're still here. <laughs> and there's a really strong, there's a strong homegrown thing as well. I mean, even outside oh, of yeah. DC and Marvel stuff, isn't there? Yeah. Um, the, the, the comic book scene here is not really superhero based. It's yeah. mostly indie comic books. Yeah. And they have, yeah, they have, those the people here have more fans uh, than, than I do here. <laughs> so yeah. it's like uh, the Filipinos, uh, the, the superhero scene here, is smaller than than the actual, you know, the than yeah. the indie comics fans like the uh, Manix Abrera and a lot of the Filipino creators. They have yeah. their conventions. Um, I just go there to hang out, hang out. But I think, yeah, it's it, it's a different scene. It's a different yeah. demographic, different yes. um, uh, subject matters. Yeah. yeah, and it always has been, isn't it? You know, it's 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 been around for a long time. That that indie scene out there. I'm not really sure. Maybe uh, I'm not sure. I, I would. People that might hate me for for anything. It's uh, it's I don't know. Probably even twenty years ago, there's a small indie scene, but it's yeah. I think the there's different people now. Right, right. Uh, and also, if you you mentioned the Filipinos from from the eighties and stuff like that, yeah. that that form of comics is has died down because that's yeah. the comic book where you get to. It's a very different uh, genre. Yeah. So it's more yeah. action. There's love stories. There's comedy. Mm-hmm. Very very little superhero um it's it's a very different uh demographic it's in tagalog it's in filipino it's not in english so yeah. that itself tells you it's a different uh yes. different demographic yeah. yeah and um so that form of comic books die down mm-hmm. and then the, the the indie comics right now it's actually a lot of them are in, are in the english language so mm-hmm. that that itself tells you it's a different it's a different yeah different group because I remember um, when I was in Manila, Manila ten years ago with you, um, I remember huge cheers for like Jerry, for example. Mm-hmm. You know your friend mm-hmm. Inker. You know um, yeah. when Jerry came on stage, he was at least as beloved for doing something like Elmer. Elmer has own mm-hmm. project, you know. So that okay. I, I mean, I remember people going crazy when he walked on stage, and I kind of loved that. You know that okay, oh, yeah. everybody appreciated the American scene, but there was still a strong Filipino thing out there as well, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has uh, recognitions from all, all over the world. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the the he, he writes it himself as well, yeah. so it's a. So what, so what's I, that I, 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 yeah. I was what's that the the American uh, your Filipino American love affair with uh, with comics then you know because like I say it's very far away you know like it, it took a long time for me to travel to get there mm-hmm. and everything you know and, oh, yeah. and people were as excited by American comics as a kid in New York you know like what mm-hmm. what do you think what do you think created all of that. The, the American comics, the love for American yeah, comics. Yeah, the fact that it's such, such a huge thing. Um, I think it's the, the, there's the, in the 80s, there was Phil Bars, a, a, co- mm-hmm. a small comic book shop. Yeah. They set up here, there's like a couple of them. So I think it's the, probably partly Bill Sportasho and, 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 um, and Image Comics. But I think way before that, yeah. there were a lot of, Marvel comics, Marvel and DC comic book fans, and I'm not sure who started it, but I think it just started organically. Um, uh, I think one of the reasons is is Phil Bars, the a comic book shop, who, mm-hmm. you know, who, who brought in comics uh, through maybe because there was an American presence here as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I can base this I, that could be the reason, and it's also right. the reason why we had a lot of comics in the 80s and 70s because of the world after world war ii there was some yeah. american base you know american presence here and stuff like that so the, the american yeah <laughs> american <laughs> expats maybe yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because when i was growing up i i was looking at all this filipino comic art in the late 70s and in the early 80s mm-hmm. that i didn't know was filipino you know, I assume mm-hmm. this, you know so many Americans of different names from all over the world. So I just assumed oh, yeah. this was I assumed Alex Nino, Tony Dezuniga, Nesta yeah. Redondo, you know, Alfredo Alcala. 
I assumed all of those guys lived in the Bronx, you know, and, <laughs> and they, they just worked for Marvel and DC. And I had no oh. idea that this was an incredible Filipino yeah. talent, this, you know. And somebody yeah, yeah. said to me, I, I didn't know this. I mean, the Philippines is what, 115 million people or something in the Philippines, you know, but there's still a disproportionately high number of brilliant artists come out of this one country, you know. Uh, but somebody said to me, DC, I think it was, um, came to the Philippines in the 70s, like 10 years earlier, mm -hmm. to find mm -hmm. the talent because they heard there was this incredible base mm -hmm. of talent out there. Do you know anything yeah. about that? There was a DC search for talent back in the 70s, specifically in the Philippines, I heard. I'm I'm not very you know, privy to all the details, but yeah. I think there was uh, there's even some issue about this. Um, one of the artists who a prominent artist who basically served as an agent for for the rest of the talents here, right? And uh -huh. but, uh, you know, as agents go, there would be some you know uh, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, issues with with payments and stuff. So I yeah. think that was an issue. So there was a middleman, right? Uh, because uh, um, I do think that you know, prior to the internet, the communication is not as well developed, you know, and a lot of them yeah. aren't fluent in English or probably didn't have the the social skills to you know to or to to fight for their wages and stuff like that. So I right, think right. there was a middle middleman artist, and uh, there was some resentment and stuff like that. And, yeah, you know, I, that, that's what I heard. DC Comics itself, maybe that they hired, they did that through one of the artists. Who right. served as a as an agent as a scout? Right. Yeah, because I I think the the, the rumor I'd heard uh, I don't know if it's true but it was one of those old stories was that the Filipino artists were unaware but the American publishers were getting a bit wary of American freelancers who were mm -hmm. for bigger page rates so they basically kind of went to the Philippines and took mm -hmm. the greater status from the Philippines and, and worked with them is that true have you have you heard anything about that you know that uh, the the artists were Sometimes they were being targeted, really, you know, because they they weren't being unionized the way the American ones were, you know. I haven't heard of that, but I yeah. I, I could see that happening, um, yeah. especially during that time. Um, good thing with the internet, everyone is like, uh, everyone is aware. Yeah, you know, instantly now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can easily get pirated and hired by another yes. company. You can yeah. so that. But even I I think globalization, you know, cuts both both ways, and yeah. you know. I haven't heard of that of that particular um, uh, case, to be honest. Because you know, it's really interesting because it was the first sense of kind of like uh, comic book art had a relatively generic um, style. I mean, you had mm -hmm. Kirby was very different from Gil Kane, who was different from Kurt Swan and everything, you know. Mm -hmm. But these guys were so different and so amazing. You know, like when I saw mm -hmm. Nesta Redondo or, uh, you know, Alex Nino, I'd never seen anything like right. Alex Nino in my life. So in the way yeah. we, we almost take it for granted now that the global... Uh, yeah, yeah. Comic book art, you know, can be very different country to country. This blew yeah. my mind when I would see this coming in Conan and everything. I'd never seen art mm -hmm. like it. It was so exciting. Yeah, Alex Nino is very unique. Yeah, but I think I'm not. I'm not sure if I'm getting in trouble, but I think most of the other Filipinos were yeah. excellent as well. Nasser Redondo and my favorite, um, um, yeah, Nasser Redondo and of course, um, um, most of the other guys, except for Alex Nino. I think they're all kind of. Drew from Hal Foster, right? No. Well, Hal Alfredo Alcala certainly you can see it in those guys because it's right. that sort of you know hyper detailed yeah. kind of like adventure mm -hmm. strip kind of look, isn't it? You know, but yeah, but yeah. still it felt. It, I mean, I think the Americans had sort of gone a slightly more simplistic mm -hmm. direction, you know, but his mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. so much more. The, the the Filipinos were more rendered, weren't they? I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, sure. Especially Alcala, right? The, the yeah, he's answer. amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Amazing. And Tony Dezaniga, I mean, I, I used to love mm. his stuff. I assumed he's yeah. Italian because that sounded such an Italian name to me. You know? Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, by the way, Alex Nino just released, at eight years old, he just released uh, like a, a book a couple of years ago or last year. Really? So, oh, yeah, wow. it's amazing. It's, uh, I, I, I have it. It's, it's by my friend. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Shoot, uh, the title escapes me right now, but it's an amazing Alex Nino book. I will, I will definitely, uh, I'll look it up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm going to get a copy. Is, is it new artwork? Is it all new? All new, new artwork. Yeah, new yeah. artwork. And um, it's amazing. It's amazing that he can do these things at, at his age. So it's like his eyes are failing. So he's yeah. like drawing the large, large yeah. format paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amazing stuff. Because it's yeah. funny, I was talking to a friend the other day about this, you know, and you know, sometimes 
as artists get older, they become less popular. You know, new people come in yeah. and replace them and so on. But there's some guys who just escape this. And I think like Joe Kubert mm-hmm. was still amazing at 80. You know, Gil Kane in mm-hmm. the 70s was still phenomenal. You know, Howard yeah, Chase is still fantastic. You know, there's no reason mm-hmm. in eighth decade you can't still be brilliant. And yeah, and is, is it something you ever think about? You know, I mean, you're still young now and everything, but do you, always, <laughs> do you try and think, okay, I must keep refining my craft and make it as good as a as it can always be? Richard Corbin was as brilliant the month mm-hmm. before he died as when he, yeah. when he was 25. You know, yeah, it's a yeah for sure. Um, it's to be honest, I'm a bit, I get a bit insecure with the new guys. You know, the the yeah. newer. It's like I used to be uh, the young one, but now, <laughs> <laughs> but now the, the veteran. <laughs> but yeah, for sure, I I, you know, I, I always want to improve my art. Although I do know that I could really do more to improve myself. Like, for example, I could be spending time to draw hands more, like practice, <laughs> you know, like that's the way you get better. Uh, yeah. Deliberate practice, right? Yes. And yeah. yeah, I don't do it. Yeah. I only draw hands when I need to draw hands, right? <laughs> so, so I know I could still get better if I wanted to. Yeah. It's just yeah. that. There's just no, you know, like I don't memorize the skeleton, right? I don't memorize the back muscles because you seldom draw the back muscles. So until yeah, now, yeah. I, you know, I draw, you know, the back muscle of a, a strong man. I still need some <laughs> reference. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, um, there's some there's some effort, but not as much as I, I should be doing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But it's I mean, but, one thing I love about new people coming through is it does keep you on your toes, doesn't it? Because if oh, somebody yeah. comes through with a skill you haven't seen before, you're like, oh, I have to, I have to keep trying. You know? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Especially with the digital art, um, there's yeah. so much. Um, and although I think my my stuff improved, I also I'm also working less. So yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, especially Instagram, just browse Instagram. You'll see a lot of great artworks and yeah. artists. And uh, it's, 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 it's a tougher competition mm-hmm. because everyone is in Instagram, the internet, but you also get better because you get to see what other people are doing. So, yeah. 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 I think especially Instagram, I see a lot less sequential art. I see a lot of like, mm-hmm. you know, game design type stuff and everything or fantasy mm-hmm. art, and everything. Yeah. but they tend to be like an Elo, don't they? You know, as yeah. opposed to sequential art. And I definitely, I think I see less sequential art around than I used to, you know, uh, uh, high end, uh, high end stuff, you know. And I, do you ever wonder sometimes, you know, because comic book sales fluctuate, and if we mm-hmm. come from a period like the Image Comics period, for example, when things were selling six, seven figures, then mm-hmm. if one percent of those guys try and be a comic book artist, you have a huge number of people coming in who are who are very good, you know. Um, but if the sales are, you know, forty thousand, fifty thousand, or something, that's even that one percent of that is still a tiny number of people who are going to come in and try and be, be a comic book artist. You're inspiring a smaller base, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so I wonder if you know people have gone less into comic art, more into game design, and so on. But I think it's a shame because being a comics artist is a, it's an awesome job and also a very well paid job if you yeah. if you work on yeah. the right things. I, I almost it feels crass sometimes to talk about it, but I, but I do think it's worth saying what an amazing and lucrative career it can be compared to other types of art, you know? I have to say, I'm, I'm, I think I'm the lucky one. I think mm-hmm. it's like the NBA or like basketball in general. Yeah. The top players are paid a lot, but I think yeah. majority aren't. Mm-hmm. So it may, I think it could be true for me, but for most people, it may not be, especially with the, you know, the, yeah. Um, <laughs> Do you not think as an as a massive influx of people come in though, then that lifts all ships though too? You know, so if you if you have a, an industry that's ten times bigger, you have a lot more well paid artists. You know, I think so. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, the the problem is that comic books used to dominate the whole attention span of of a teenager or of a reader or the person basically. Mm-hmm. But right now, it's really hard to you know with TikTok mm-hmm. and. Uh, video games and um they're all attention uh grabbers and yeah. it, comic books are competing for with that whether we like it or not so <laughs> so <laughs> you, it, know, I, yeah. you know you don't inspire by manga though whenever you whenever you see manga though you think like, I, I walk in i was in the bookshop yesterday with my mm-hmm. children and they flooded to the manga section and the manga section is 10 times the size of the American comic book section, you know? Um, so it's not that people aren't buying comics, you know, like they're, mm-hmm. they're still picking up paper and reading pictures, yeah. you know, uh, but it's just, sure. it's just different stuff, you know? So, so for me, it's just American comics have to rethink the way they work and, mm-hmm. and try and, and do something that appeals to this market, you know, like, uh, yeah. 
you know, because because I remember back in the late nineties when I was breaking in, DC said, "Oh, the reason our sales have taken a slump, which they had at that point, you know, post post yeah, yeah. and everything." Um, they said is because kids are playing Activision games now. You know, they're playing Pitfall and all that. You know, and I was mm-hmm. like, "Well, you know, they are." But if the comics were good, they would pick up those too. You know, like, I I think the work can just always be better, can't it? Right across the board. Ah, oh, that's true. That's a good point. That's a good point. And even in Japan, until now, it's uh, the books are still are still filled up, and uh, yeah. and the comic book section for sure. Yeah, but I saw and, a stat the other day. I was looking at some twenty twenty one book scan figures. And it said seventy eight percent of graphic novel sales um, was manga, and that's not even including Dogman, YA, and everything. You know, oh, wow. seventy eight percent, and it's gone up. It's obviously, gone up since then. Really? So, wow. so the numbers have the numbers have improved, but it's been Japanese import stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. So, for me, I think that's super inspiring, though. You know, the idea that people still want to read. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is, there is. But uh, to go back to Manila and everything, you know, I mean, I, I can see why you. You haven't moved, you know, because I mean, I, I loved it. I, I I think of all the years I've done this job, that was the most fun time I've ever had. Oh, wow. And so, oh, wow. The, people, the people were just fantastic, you know, like they treated you so well. The National Bookstore, um, the, the, the signing I, I, we did out there, you know, and but yeah. do you remember, like, I mean, I felt like a visiting, you know, president from uh, some banana republic kind of thing, you know, like. The, 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 I didn't even have to go through security. The, the the guys sent at the airport. They sent a limo uh, to the plane, and I came off the plane and uh, walked into a limo. And they had flags all over town with my face on it and everything. I thought I was having a stroke or something. You know, it was completely. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know that though. They they they, they didn't you send you a helicopter, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've we, never we had, got... Normally, you show up and you get a cab, you know, and you're yeah. <laughs> But it was amazing because the sides of buses, they had my face on the sides of buses and stuff. I mean, oh, wow. they went all out. It was crazy, but but they were yeah. so kind and uh, and and really, it was a great week, wasn't it? I really enjoyed it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. People still have fond memories of that of that event, and we would <laughs> love to have it anytime. Oh, and of course, not, the guy from National Bookstore is amazing. He's you know? great, isn't he? Yeah, really. And the people yeah, were also and, um, nice to work there. Oh yeah, of course. It's it's one of the places that you should you should you know visit again and. Uh, <laughs> It's yeah, it's it's safe here generally, and you know, <laughs> but yeah, um, that that was a lot of fun, Mark. Thank you so much for doing that. That's crazy. I always remember I've kept in touch with John C. Cruz and Jiggy Cruz as well. Oh, cool. Yeah, I, so so I'll drop them little emails now and then. But they were great. They were really good fun. They became my set of bodyguards. You know, we were uh, just hanging out, drinking for a for a for a week. Um, oh, wow. do, do you remember what's the name of that dish that you get in Manila? Where um, it's it's a little chick inside an egg. And you swallow the whole check down your throat without chewing it. You uh, balut, right? Balut. Yeah. Balut. I was terrified of that. Terrified. Yeah. And I could, I could see other people doing it around the table, and I knew my turn was coming. It was. <laughs> you know what? It's not. It's not a common Filipino food. It's. Oh, it's, right. it's common as a street food, and not everyone. Almost everyone don't eat that. What? Very very few people eat that. Yes. Yes. You've been tricked. <laughs> It's like uh, I don't know. It's 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 a very exotic food, basically. Right. So, yeah. Jonty and Jiggy, Jonty and Jiggy made it out to me like, oh, it would be a huge insult if you didn't eat our national. Oh dish my god! Thing, you know? Those guys probably have never tried it. <laughs> Jiggy, hey Jiggy, you probably never had balut ever. So <laughs> they tricked you. On. <laughs> so you know. Oh, yeah. Because I got a good look at the Philippines and a, a you know a good week there getting to see it all mm-hmm. thing, you know and um, and it's so fascinating to me you know it's quite different obviously from American life and everything you know so yeah. what was it like growing up a comic fan there you know when you're a little kid I mean what age were you introduced to comics and everything or was it a later thing for you an earlier thing in your childhood so no I was more into animation like the Ninja right. Tur- Turtles Ghostbusters Transformers and right. then Robot. And then comic books, they're quite pricey, so they're yeah. only for the richer people. So right, I wasn't, yeah. you know, have the uh, the money to buy, you know, like a sure. buck or, yeah. or fifty cent comic book. Yeah. So you know, you can uh, you can re- you can see some American comics from time to time, but they're very pricey, and they're you know they're they're you know, very well taken care of of the owners. So yeah. you see comic books, you see local comic books on the on the marketplace on the side of the street. Those yeah. are common. So for me, it's more animation and stuff like that. And then at 11, uh, age 11, my mom got me like a How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way by Stanley right, yeah. and John. 
yeah. and then I started drawing comic books. I started drawing Captain America and uh, and stuff like that. And then, but uh, I wasn't really collecting until high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I I borrowed uh, an issue of Spawn from my class from my classmate, and I yeah. fell asleep. So I drooled on on the Spawn <laughs> cover. <laughs> I ruined it. So I had to buy another one, and it started my whole collection. So, <laughs> so I, I I I came into comics during the Image Comics boom, and I got all the variant covers, and the uh, the Young Bloods and the you know the yeah. Wildcats yeah. number two and stuff like that. So yeah, I that's my my collection. It's mostly Image Comics. <laughs> so so. Like Jim, Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri, Rob Liefeld, were, were yes. those your your big influences then, really? And and Wilson, yeah. of course, as well. Yeah. Yes, I, I would say without Image Comics, I probably wouldn't be you know, without without those Image guys. I probably won't, wouldn't be into comics that much. To wow. Be honest. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. I, I don't think <laughs> you'd be alone in that, you know. And and you can see it in your mm-hmm. style because the dynamism. You know, it's uh, the characters are jumping off the page at you in your books, and you can see that coming from those guys, can't you? Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> and like, um, was there anybody else? You know, anything that predated that that interested you? Or was it all very 1990, 1991 when you're about sixteen years old, maybe then? Well, well, John Buscema for sure because of the because of the book, right? Right. And then, did you ever read the comics? Did you ever see John Buscema Marvel mm-hmm. comics? No, 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 yeah. Because they, they were also- well before. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't have access to them. Right. Uh, yeah. To the yeah. Comics. I only have the book, and then Andrew Loomis. My sister gave me an Andrew Loomis book. Yeah. Which was actually photocopied. <laughs> <laughs> right now you can download it, but that before so I was always, it was it was harder though. It's more real realistic, right? So it's harder for yeah. me as a kid to copy them, and uh, they're they're all nudes as well. So it's so very distracting. So. <laughs> so, but I think it was really. A lot of animation, a lot of Ninja Turtles, and a lot of uh, Ghostbusters and Transformers. Yeah. So that's why I think I'm pretty okay with tech as well because of those. Right. Robot. Yeah. yeah. And it's <laughs> funny, like whenever um, I was a kid, I noticed that the artists that were more popular actually was the ones that were easier to copy, like that. You know, so the image guys are easier than you know, like Frank Whiteley. There's not many Frank Whiteley images yeah. just because yeah, yeah. the style is so difficult to draw. Yes, yeah. You know, anything yeah. that's hyper detailed like that. But the image yeah. guys were quite easy to copy, weren't they? I guess it was the big yeah. splashy image and everything, you know? So yeah. I can see why that would appeal when you're a teenager, especially, you know? It's, it's a great yeah. starting point, isn't it? You know? yeah. and do, you feel, do you still feel it with those guys? Do they feel like the source of your comic book love or, or has your taste moved on in terms of artists since then? I think it's still the same. I think it's still yeah. the image. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 yeah. I still get the the goosebumps when I see those comic books, those old covers, you know. Yeah, and Jim Lee, yeah. Farley, and, and uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah, image comics for sure. And uh, happy anniversary, by the way, to image. <laughs> yes, yes. It's funny, like um, my uh, my nephews and nieces, and my, now my own mm-hmm. kids. I've done this thing for years where maybe once a year or something, I'll lay a whole bunch of comics out and I put some old comics there from the eighties. I put some image comics from the noughties. I put some current comics, mm-hmm. some foreign comics, you know, just mix it all up. And what's really fascinating, uh, as I, I say to them, like, what's your, what, what looks cool here? They all go for ni- 1990s image comics. Every one of them, even mm-hmm. now, no matter what period I do this in, they go straight for Rob's Young Bloods. They go for Jim Lee. Oh. Or Cass, and everything. It's really interesting. There's something about it's, that. It's, it's, for sure, for sure. Like Rob Liefeld, there's a reason why he's uh, one of the biggest stars ever, right? Yes. So for yeah. sure. It was so funny, isn't it? Because Rob, Rob's such a nice guy. Like, I mean, he's mm-hmm. so pleasant. Everybody likes Rob, and he's so talented. Like, he's, he's got huh. such energy to his work. And he always gets a trashing online. And I, I do think it's, um, you know, because he got so big, there's a certain amount of jealousy yeah. probably from people. And then it becomes fashionable because influencers are jealous by him and everything of them, you know. So, mm-hmm. but it's such a shame. I think those guys are so undervalued, really, from an artist point mm-hmm. of view, you know. Yeah, I, I think those who know. You know they recognize that Rob's uh, uh, talent contribution to the to the art form. Mm. It's, it's a you know uh, pouches are great, so I love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a joke, but yeah, yeah. Rob, you know, I think there's. I'm not sure if it's accurate, but I think you could even say that Rob influenced, like, let's say Todd McFarlane's um, panel designs as well. So, oh, you know, question, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it it's it has some a lot to do with with how. With why image comics are so exciting, you know, yeah. crazy power, yeah. and you could say you know it came from Kirby, but it was, it was you know also Rob. I talked to Rob about this actually uh, in the second podcast, 
And it was mm-hmm. interesting because it's the the idea of those guys all competing with each other is what made it exciting mm-hmm. and what made them improve. Like if Rob Liefeld had appeared in 1978 or something when there was just less cool stuff around, you know, mm-hmm. I don't think he would have become Rob Liefeld. They, those, he and Todd and Jim, they had to really be competing with each other and they were all desperate. They were all alpha male personalities and they were all desperate to be number one, which... <laughs> So you can yeah. see them all feeding off each other and learning from each other too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're 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 all equally talented as well. And yeah, yeah. And, and so then then you did something that really surprised me though, is you went to DC because I thought the logical place for you was Marvel, like you to do X Men and mm-hmm. Wolverine and everything, just with your stylistic background and everything. Mm-hmm. So, and um, what made you go to DC? Because that that was an unusual step. I remember thinking, what? Whenever you you went. I think it was uh I was flattered that they offered me a cliffhanger deal. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was like, oh wow, I get to be, you know, mentioned in the same breath as uh, Joe Madden, you know. Right. And right. Chris- so I guess that was the the initial part where I had, you know, I was able to basically it's for you know to 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 increase my visibility, my my basically clout and stuff like that. So I yeah. think, you know, being a cliffhanger book is, is right. one of the reasons. Of course, you know, it's it's the only way to, to get better competitive pay as well to you know, move around well, yeah. it's, it's great i mean people don't do this so much anymore but the old trick is if you're getting 700 dollars from marvel dc have mm-hmm. to pay 900 to get you and marvel have to pay a mm-hmm. grant to get you back and then if dc mm-hmm. want you it has to go to 1200 and people have kind of lost that art and they're like oh no but i'm i'm friends i'm friends with the guys at marvel or i'm friends with the guys yeah. at dc but if they were real it's friends hard. they would pay more they would pay more for you yeah. Yeah, it is really hard though. It's like yeah. it's easy to, to think that way, but when you're yeah. in, when you're that the situation is really hard. It's like they play with your emotions as well, and, and <laughs> you know they're they're friendly with you, and you, there's also some you know loyalty and stuff like that. You don't want to be seen as as you know like a money hungry and stuff like that. But in the end, it's it's that that should be the way to do it. Just do your best every time, and then you know you also have to look out for yourself and stuff. But yeah, it did take me a while. Okay, first of all, Marvel paid me really well during yeah. the very from the very start. But yeah. you know, I got to, I wasn't able to, you know, just keep in, keep getting more and stuff. Yeah, it took me a while. It took me a while because yeah. they were Marvel's always been nice to me and DC as well. So yeah, yeah. Right. So so you went over and you did Superman as well, which was a surprise, yeah. but a nice surprise. You know, I mean, that book was great. Birthright right. with Mark Wade is an awesome. Yes. I mean that's. There's not many graphic novels that people hand out with Superman, even mm-hmm. though it's my favorite character, you know. But there's mm-hmm. not many um, things that, like Dark Knight Returns that you say here, read this Superman book. But Birthright is kind of Birthright and Kingdom Come are my two yeah. go tos, really. I love Matt oh, Wade's got oh, a great really? take on Superman. Yeah, it's good. Wow, you just mentioned uh, my, uh, Birthright uh, with, with Kingdom Come. That, that That's yeah. a huge, uh, you know, that's a huge uh, <laughs> component for sure. Thank you so much for thinking so. Um, Birthright was introduced, was pitched to me as a, like, let's say, it's almost like an Elseworlds. Mm. Almost like an Ultimate Superman. Mm. Almost. Yes. And yeah. So that was, uh, it was also, also with Mark Wade, so I was really excited to do it. And yeah. uh, during that time, I was kind of distracted, so, so like, the, the style is very simple, right? Simplistic. Yeah. I was, because I was, like, recording songs you know at home and i was busy with my band and stuff yeah. like that so <laughs> it was it was a bit simpler than my usual but at the same time i don't think i could have done it any other way for me yeah. superman will be something lighter something more on the animation spectrum mm-hmm. for me in my opinion yeah and then batman would be the opposite would be grittier with more lines and stuff like that yes. more yeah. shape super yeah more open yeah so what i guess it surprised out. you didn't do more batman because batman um really lends itself well to your style you know like superman mm-hmm. suits because it's an unrealistic character it suits re- realistic art you know it's, it's, it's like in a like neil adams works well or the norman rockwell kind of style that kurt mm-hmm. swan employed and everything whereas batman yeah. suits that more cartoony sketchy more exaggerated style mm-hmm. that you and the image guys mm-hmm. do i think works really mm-hmm. well for batman have you never been tempted to do a big run on batman oh yeah I've all, that that was has always been my one of my dream characters to draw yeah uh, I think that was um I think Marvel just uh just uh made sure that I stayed. So <laughs> they, they, <laughs> Marvel, Marvel took care of me really well. I think yeah, uh, yeah I mm, maybe to put it bluntly, maybe DC didn't want me as badly as Marvel did. Yeah. Just, I yeah, I think true. they should. I mean the Batman books, you know guys mm-hmm. who are really good 
then really blow up when they go and do Batman, don't they? You know, and yeah, I, I think you you and Batman for 12, 12 issues would be something else. I'd love to see that. Yeah, that's that's still a that's still a dream, of course, for sure. Yeah. It's my you know probably a bucket list, definitely. You know, to have my my uh, uh, long Halloween. You know? yeah, <laughs> yeah. And right. if you, in five years time, you and I should do it. We should do Batman together. You know, that'd be awesome. for sure. Yeah. That, that would be great. That would be great. <laughs> yeah. I'm but, I'm down. I'm down. <laughs> but then when you did go back to Marvel, I mean, it was then it was exciting because, you know, it's like, I love that jumping around between companies. You'd mm. Avengers with Bendis, Secret yeah. Invasion and everything. And you, you, I think you probably, I would say you were Marvel's main artist. You know, like, I think that period you were doing all their biggest books, weren't you? Like you and, you and Bendis together felt like a really strong team. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Mostly because of Bendis, though. I think I think yeah, it was Bendis because oh, there was a there was a <laughs> David Finch. There was David Finch, right? Before Finch too, Marvel. yeah, yeah, Finch too. David Finch is bigger than than I was, so so I think it's yeah. I was I I could say you can say that, but at the same time, it's I think that was the era where writers were still you know were the <laughs> so it was Bendis you know taking the lead on that one, <laughs> but I was lucky to be there. Lucky to be here for sure. It takes two. And I, I, I do think 70% of what makes a comic work is the art. And that's a terrible thing for a writer to say. But I think the art's <laughs> so important. And if you, you know, a, a good writer can tell a good story, but the, the books you mm -hmm. keep are the great art, isn't it? That's the ones you hang on to, the really great artists. Mm -hmm. I keep all those issues. I, I love them. Yeah. Thanks, thanks. Yeah. True, true. But you know, my favorite thing of yours, I'd say my favorite thing you've done, and it's my favorite Marvel comic of that decade, is Ultimate <laughs> Hulk Wolverine. Mm, wow, I, I love that book. I, I think it's oh, thank so you. great. It just it really works. And Damon Lindelof writing it as well. Uh, I mean, I, I can remember word for word what happens in that book. You know that opening mm -hmm. where you have the the double page spread when you turn over and yeah. it's Hulk ripping Wolverine in half. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Normally, writers take a few years to find their feet in comic books. And da yeah. Damon had never written comics before, and he just came in yeah. and just nailed it right away. You know, like did you help with that, or or was that him? Did he? Did no, he that was right away, yeah. That was all. That was all, Damon. Really? All Damon. Yeah. 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 I was actually um, quite concerned because I was I was uh, from the you know old school Marvel stuff. So I yeah. I really gonna rip in too. So I was like, you know, I I was hesitant. I actually drew on uh of the first drawing I did was like, it was still mostly you know, it was still kind of intact. It was being ripped ripped apart. Yeah. It was like, is this gonna pass the whatever you know? The <laughs> so that that was Damon. I had to say, and he's yeah he's. For someone who's never written comics before, he's just excellent, and um, the, the the script is so is so clear and so easy yeah. to do. He's like a natural, and yeah. And did you guys communicate? Did you talk back and forth, or, or was it a straightforward? It was it was, most, it was mostly uh, email. Yes, right. I was more, yeah email and, and the script. No, we, we didn't. Uh, I I I seldom talk to to my writers. You probably you're the person I, I speak to the most. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's mostly the script. And um, even yeah, yeah, he's he's a super nice guy, one of the nicest as well. Yes, yeah. he's great, so talented. And it was it was an exciting time because Lost was the biggest show in television at the time. Oh yeah, it was pretty cool. Somebody coming like I was talking to Jeff Johns about this the other day. It's usually the other way people from comic books get into television and animation and everything. So it was quite interesting seeing it work the other way because these guys had been comic fans their whole life, and for mm -hmm. him, the ultimate honor was not doing Lost; it was to work with you and to do. A Marvel book, you know. Yeah, that's that, that's insane. I was a huge fan of Lost. So yeah. when he when we he you know we paused for like two two years in between issue yeah. number two and three or something. Like I didn't yeah. I didn't yeah. I was watching Lost. <laughs> <laughs> I was like oh, whatever. Just, <laughs> and in between I did I did yeah I did the uh, Avengers as well. So what that co what caused that big delay was it just Damon was busy with work. Was he just busy? Yeah. 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 Because I've never yeah, asked was... you that. I've always meant to ask you, and I didn't know how long it was going to be. So every month I would check in on the shop and find out <laughs> when when's the book coming out. Was it really two yeah. years? Is that how long that was? Yeah, I think that was yeah, that was about oh two my years. God, did, <laughs> my gosh, I, if I'm not mistaken, I did New Avengers and Secret Invasion, and then it was longer, probably longer than two years. Yeah, but yeah, it was, it was busy. But you know, I, I I didn't care. It was like you know, I, I would finish it when he's ready. But it's funny, I can't remember who it was. I, I think it might have been Joe Quesada had this great line, whenever the Ultimates was running late, as it often was mm -hmm. with us, you know, um, Joe Quesada said, nobody remembers how on time a great book was, they just remember how good mm -hmm. it was. 
And I think there's something yeah. in that, isn't there? So That's true. I, I kind of forgot about the delays on that book because I just have it as a nice trade on my shelf. And I'm so pleased there was no fill-in guy brought in to do it. It's just it just exists now. It's yeah. there for and it's there to read anytime you want. Yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> Something I didn't even know until somebody told me was you worked on Serenity. Like, uh, when, I, how did all that happen? I did. I did. Okay, so Jeff Loeb introduced me to to I think he showed my work to um to um um. Um, the creator of Serenity. Sorry, uh, Joss Whedon. Joss Whedon, of course. <laughs> and then Joss Whedon liked it and introduced and and then set up a guy. Uh, uh, he's one of his designers, Barry Chusid. Right. So Barry Chusid was one of the designers of Serenity. So I was basically like a freelance co uh, concept artist. Um, yeah. So it was very informal, no contracts and right. stuff like that. Mm, yeah. yeah, I think, I think, that does, that I think, I, had, like it. <laughs> I think, I think I had an NDA or something. Right. I forget. I, did I have a contract? I think I did. Sorry, sorry, I'm confused. <laughs> maybe for me, because because I did a few stuff for him. Maybe I did other more informal stuff. But I think Serenity was was different. But yeah, I did a couple more movies for him. But it wasn't very. It was a. It wasn't. It, it was a uh, informal. Anyway, Serenity, I did receive the, the you know the script with my name yeah. on it and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, so I did some designs for sure. I he used some he used some of my designs. I think. Right, right, and and like were you doing the comic stuff daytime, the Serenity stuff in the evenings, or you know because you seem to. Yeah. Be, well, I mean, you always seem to be doing a monthly book. It didn't feel like you took a break to go away and do some some movie stuff. Yeah, something like that, and um, I think it was also very almost light work i think it was it was the pay was pretty good it wasn't really like for example when i design a ship yeah they're not asking me to do like a front side back thing mm -hmm. which is you know drawing of a ship and then right. send it to them yeah. it wasn't really as hard but i did do some work for video games where i had to supply you know front side backs and stuff like that and yeah. it, it did interfere a little bit but mostly no you know when you're in comics you're you you tend to you know, grass is always greener. You want to, mm -hmm. hey, maybe I should try concept art and stuff like that. But in the end, you know, comics is still a great, you know. So I, I stuck with comics, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what do you prefer? Do you, do you prefer doing something that has a wide audience like that? You know, that, uh, like comic books that sometimes pays less or something that can be a nice little fast money gig, but nobody outside of the team sees it? What do, what, what, what do you enjoy most as an artist? I think I still prefer comic books because of the recognition we get, right? Yeah. And I just want to, to do concept art because it's a challenge. Yeah. Like, especially the, the art style that they use. It's more like a digital painting, rough, you know. It's yeah. it, it's it's something different. It's also, it's um, interesting to me, sci-fi art, basically. I'm not going to be a concept designer for, let's say, a period piece, right? Like Victorian, yeah. <laughs> you know. A vampire hunter thing no it's it's mostly like sci-fi and uh, ships and robots and stuff like that so i think it's more something excites me i guess and you know to be recognized hey hey he did a a, a movie or a, yeah more like recognition but you know in the end it's still comic books it's, it's funny because pals of mine in comics over the years have been very excited at working outside of comic books mm -hmm. and there is a weird social status thing that comic guys mm -hmm. sometimes feel, I think, where they feel, okay, comics is here, but storyboarding is here and production design is here. But there's a weird yeah. thing that happens, and I, I've said this to friends who've worked on Marvel movies, you yeah. don't want to be credit number 724 when everybody's yeah. left the cinema, you know? If you do the comic book that's the originator of something, yeah. you're at the front. You know, you're, you're on the red carpet and you get all the money, you know, it's like yeah. the, rec the recognition is actually really great from comics. And and pals of mine yeah. used to dream when they were doing Batman, they'd be dreaming of doing movie storyboards. And I was like, but nobody's going to see your storyboards. <laughs> it's only the cinematographer, the director, they see your storyboards. You yeah. know? So yeah. sometimes you have to go away from comics to appreciate them, don't mm -hmm. you? Yeah, true. But I think it's just everyone just wants to boo. You know, have their foot in Hollywood or something like that. Maybe, yeah. maybe just get a taste of being in a movie business. You know, yeah. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and that was exciting for us. I mean, you and I we did two things together. We did yeah. Superior, 
um, which we sold on sure. as well, you know, and and Super Crooks, yeah. which we mm-hmm. originally planned as a movie, if you remember, and then we did an animated mm-hmm. uh, anime yeah. Japanese show yeah. um, uh, for for Netflix, and we're we're mm-hmm. putting together um, the live action one, but we haven't mm-hmm. quite found the way to do it yet, you know, because uh-huh. that um, that live action market superhero thing is so crowded. You want to be mm-hmm. something special and something different, yeah. Right? But we'll get yeah. there with it, you know, but. How did that feel to you after Marvel to do something you owned yourself, your own thing? It's uh well, it, it's it's with you, you know, mm-hmm. Mark. To be honest, I'm not really, um, I wasn't too confident in doing it with 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 let's say on my own or other or other writers. It's, it was with you, so it was an easy decision to be honest. So you you had a lot to do with it for sure, and um, um, there was some some pressure of course i didn't you know the sales if i'm not mistaken wasn't as hot as as your other titles and i feel oh i let you down and stuff like that but no, you know. i think i think we did about i think we did about, if i remember right we did about 60 of nemesis and about 45 of these i think so mm-hmm. slightly yeah, yeah. Less. i mean not much you know but yeah. um but i i think it, a super villain uh book like nemesis you know which is super mm. violent and everything you know that's, yeah, yeah. that's a kind of sexier property than that's a heist thing isn't it you know <laughs> so like uh so it was always going to do a little better but like uh but the, the life it had of its own beyond it you know and uh, mm. elsewhere, like who would have guessed when we were doing that thing that we'd be doing an anime version of it yeah years later, the right? anime was great by the way it's, it's i love it yeah. i loved it yeah, yeah. credit sequence do you not love the opening titles in the end yeah of course. yeah even the small stuff, even the the you know, the regular scenes, they have they, they put in some flares here and there. The, the, you know, the studio bones, right? It, yeah. it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. I, I love it. You and I, <laughs> they, they, they made it do their own, I guess. <laughs> yes, yeah. But I mean, you you and I, we ended up having a, a little second crack at it as well because we worked on the the anime as well. Like, I don't hmm. did you ever see the original plot. For the for the super crooks uh, anime, I, I, I was I, I was able to read the, the your synopsis. Your I think your your outline. I did. I was able to to read some of it. I guess because the original one was a little different because the Japanese mm-hmm. team weren't as well versed in American comic book stories, you know. So mm-hmm. it was a little different, you know. It was mm-hmm. uh, it was more of a fantasy thing, you know, and it, and it didn't quite click. So I asked mm-hmm. if I could rejig it, you know. So I gave it all that backstory, all the stuff we didn't have room to do in the book. You know how mm. eats and all that kind of stuff, you know. But yeah, yeah. they actually had their own their own writers come in and flesh that out even further and everything. And it was mm. it was really good stuff. I thought like yeah. some great set pieces in there, wasn't it? That whole sequence with the plane, with the Diesel mm. brothers fighting on the plane, that, was amazing, wasn't yeah. it? Yes, yes. And the chain um, thing, you know, the the molecular chainsaw at the end, just yeah. like that that sequence is fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's anime is just, just something. It's a different animal. It's for yeah. sure and. Uh, it's it's great. It's wilder than I could have imagined. So. Yeah, and thank you for that, Mark. <laughs> oh, listen, but there's something lovely though about seeing your thing in a different form too, isn't there? Like mm-hmm. I remember, um, you know, it's quite moving when you see one of your things come to life. But also, um, I loved it when I saw your first pages coming back to me for the first time in years because we hadn't worked together mm-hmm. in quite a long time. And the new characters that were put in the show, I saw your designs for, and I was like. Oh, do you almost forget how good Linial is, you know, when those when those new designs come in, you're like, wow, you know, it's I love it when an artist does something that's ten times better than what's in my head. And and that's what you always do. And and when I saw those designs coming, you know, the guy with the helmet and everything, like Orlock and everything, it's yeah. perfect, you know, absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I was just sad that you know he he appeared for like a few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm hoping for more, but you know, <laughs> But yeah, Mark. I mean, you you definitely have your you know your your eye for design as well. I I I must have sent you hundreds of superior designs. Yes. And, <laughs> and so you know, it's you definitely you, you have your you know definitely have the great taste. And well, uh, yeah. I, I've got a good eye, but I'm just not a good enough artist myself. You know, yeah. like I can do I can do a sort of basic design or something, but I need mm-hmm. somebody with real flair to come in. I so I know what I want. But it's mm. uh, it's outside my po- realm of possibility and my capabilities, you know. Whereas you just come <laughs> in and you just get it, you know. And Superior was another one. I mean, we'd so many yeah. versions of that that almost happened as a film as oh, well. Uh, yeah, Matthew, yeah, yeah. Matthew Vaughn had it for a few years. He was going to make it mm. right after Kick Ass at one point, if you remember. Mm. And he was mm. talking to Hugh Jackman quite seriously for a while about playing Superior. 
And, um, and I always thought that was a, a hilarious idea, you know, because it's about a guy who used to be a superhero actor, you know, like that's one of the storylines in it. And Jackman obviously has his Wolverine thing. And yeah, yeah, he yeah. just brought that extra dimension to it. And he, he'd, yeah. have, he'd have got the humor, he'd have got the gags and everything. It would have just worked mm-hmm. really well, I think. Yeah, yeah. There, there was a, yeah, there, also John Hamm was, it was, it was also right. mentioned. I was really excited. Yeah. And I think Matthew, <laughs> I, 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 Yeah. Oh, sorry, on you go. No, he's, he's just not a bigger, as big a name as uh, Hugh Jackman, for sure. So <laughs> There was a few guys, though. The, the, there was actually, you know what I, I completely forgot? Is Jeff Wardlow was in the frame to direct it. I don't know if you remember mm-hmm. Med early on, around about 2010. He was mm-hmm. in the frame to direct it um, with Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey, they were talking about. Cause mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mentioned yeah, that. Yeah. If you look at, if you look at um, God, what was it? I think it was in uh, Kick-Ass 2. There's a superior mm-hmm. poster up in the wall. And the idea was that Jeff and Jim Carrey, if Kick-Ass 2 had worked out, you know, uh, in terms of box office, that was going to be their next project together. Mm. That would have been yeah. something Jim Carrey playing superior would have been. That would have been. That would have been <laughs> I totally forgotten about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that could have worked as well. That could have worked as well. I think. Um, but I think isn't. Um, wait, wait. Didn't didn't you mention? Maybe I maybe I'm, I I I I. I've forgotten. Maybe Tom Cruise or so or something. <laughs> so, I think Matthew yeah. tried. He tried to get somebody like that. I can't I think it was Tom Cruise, but there was some Matthew, uh-huh. somebody something big. Yeah. Someone that's was that's big. Yeah, yeah. It was like a crazy big name. Yeah. Right? Um. So there was just this little period, but I think if if Kickass Kickass did well, I mean, it cost twenty yeah. million. It made a hundred million, then another hundred and forty on Blu-ray and DVD. Yeah. Uh, but if it had blown up and done crazy numbers, Matthew yes, was yeah. planning to do Superior next. That was yeah. his thing. And um and he was talking to lots of big names at that point yeah. about coming and doing it, but because it didn't, he went off and did X Men instead. Remember, he went and did X Men first class. Mm. But there was yeah, just, yeah, yeah. It's, that's what I love about this, though. You know, the adaptation thing is always fun because there's infinite possibilities. You know, there's yeah. six weeks where this guy's definitely going to be doing this thing, and then it shifts and it becomes something else, isn't it? But you mm-hmm. and I would be emailing back and forth, and <laughs> Adam was to keep me up to speed on what the latest thing was that was happening. Yeah. yeah. But now, now Netflix owns it. It's Netflix's property. They can do what they like. Mm. You know, it's still mm. at Fox for another eighteen months, and then it oh yeah comes back. Then after eighteen months, it comes okay. To Netflix. We'll see. You know. Yeah, yeah. I hope Netflix uh, does something with it as well. I think you'd have to change it now, though, because it's it, Shazam. Obviously, was there yeah, yeah. at the time, and Shazam is very very similar. I mean, we used a lot of stuff from them, but equally, a lot of our things yeah. ended up in there. You know, there's uh, mm. the big of it all. You know. Um, so yeah, I think yeah. you have to rethink the character and, and tell the story a different way so it's not like Shazam, mm-hmm. I think, you know. But, uh, you'll, you'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, there'll be something, I'm sure, you know. So. <laughs> but, um, you, I mean, the next thing, I guess, to talk about is the company sale, isn't it? You know, like, do, what's your memory of that period, you know, when you got that first email from me and Lucy sort of saying, listen, from, from the sale. Yeah, like, there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of studios yeah, yeah. very interested in buying yeah, yeah, the company. Yeah. I was, um, well, there was some a lot of false starts. So I was like, I'm still trying to trying to calm myself. Okay, I don't want to <laughs> get my heart broken. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> but yeah, it's definitely, definitely uh, uh, exciting. And of course, you know, it's 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 almost like too good to be true. It's like, oh, is this happening? And yeah. this, you know, this money and stuff. Like, oh my gosh. And uh, unfortunately, that was a time I was going through a lot of personal stuff as well. So it was like mixed emotions and stuff like that. It's like yeah it's you know confusing and it's also exciting at the same time but uh, for sure it was it definitely is probably the single best you know thing to happen to me i mean yeah for, for sure i have to say and it's it's um thank you for that thank you and uh, lucy for that for sure oh no so yeah. you know i mean thank you i mean we wouldn't add the books without all the artists you know so that because that's everybody deserved the 50 50 because it was a collaboration wasn't it we we, we all worked together for, for that. thank you thank you yeah. you're 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 very generous and uh kind to 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 artists for sure <laughs> oh listen i mean you guys do all the work you know like it's easy it's easy to say a hundred guys start fighting but you guys have to go the hundred guys <laughs> but, but, but yeah that it was very interesting looking at all the different personalities in the Middle World uh-huh. Gang because uh-huh. some people thought it was never going to happen. Like three, mm. three studios came forward to buy the, the company and they would fly us uh-huh. out to Los Angeles and have meetings and talk oh, wow. about and everything, you know. Um, but um, 
you know, then you've got the negotiation once you you, you pick which yeah. studio you're going to go with. Um, but it was interesting talking to the artists because I'd say a third of the guys were like, "This will never happen." You know, this just oh, yeah. <laughs> third were a bit unsure, and the other yeah. third were like, "Yeah, this is exciting," you know. But even yeah. I remember Johnny Ramita when we sold the Kickass rights as a movie. Mm. Johnny didn't believe the movie was going to happen, even when it had been cast and everything, you know. And, <laughs> and I, I remember being on the set with Johnny in London uh, in Elstree Studios. And saying, do you believe it now? Do you believe you were here? We're yeah. on he says, well, let's see if it gets a release and everything. You know. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I think that some, some artists, I think, maybe are naturally <laughs> pessimistic. Mm -hmm. They worry something yeah. isn't going to work out. You know? Yeah, yeah. Maybe in my case, we've had uh, a few um, um, false starts, I guess. I guess, yes. right? Yeah. Especially with Superior. And then also, you know, at the same time, um, I was, you know, going through stuff. But for sure, it's... Um, it's it's it was wild it was like i've never seen that you know that kind of money in my life right so it was like so unreal that it's numbing as well but and you know it's ah, i don't know that's why you know <laughs> you read my life. For the best. <laughs> if, we'd, if we'd sold superior as a movie and super crooks as a movie as we originally planned to you know yeah, yeah. we'd half as much money as we did from selling it to the company, you know, so actually it mm -hmm. kind of worked out for the best, really. Oh, yeah. you know, so, so thank God those were false starts for those things, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's a thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot. You know, but what's fascinating, like I said earlier, the idea that all the artists suddenly had the financial sort of worries taken away, mm -hmm. and it was amazing. A lot of people slowed down their workload. Mm -hmm yourself and, mm -hmm. and you're, you're one of the most prolific guys in the industry but you mm -hmm. were able to sort of take it a little easier but you've got interested in a lot of different things since i know you're you're busy with your band are you still is your band still martin mcfly last time i spoke to you it was martin mcfly. <laughs> okay. so, no, we're, we're we're like retired for 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 sure right? uh, we, we played a few months ago and it was a disaster so <laughs> I, was, I was like you know what guys just hang out just you know get drinks and so yeah so um as i said earlier i didn't stop Immediately after the yeah. sale, I didn't stop. I, I worked continuously until like three years, four years after. Oh, really? And then, yeah, yeah. And I realized, you know, I should uh, take it slow. But um, yeah, I'm still right now. I'm just doing covers. And um, and uh, take, basically, my workload is like 30% than my usual. Mm, yeah. Or, or less, yeah. How are you telling your day? Like, what are you doing? Oh, gosh. <laughs> 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 the, the the best uh, part is like being able to do nothing when you <laughs> it's just you know like i i take care of my health and i i do cycling i exercise yeah uh watch uh, uh uh tv and youtube and stuff like that but yeah i do keep myself busy a little bit but yeah it's I, I, it, imagine you're yeah you're still going into the studio every day though you're still I'm, um, there will be weeks that I don't draw, but there will be, but usually I do, let's say five, five covers, five to 10 covers, five to eight covers a month. So right. it's still, you know, still yeah, an yeah. okay time working. Yeah. 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 It's still busy. It's key, uh, pay the bills and stuff like that. I mean, there's some guys who are working full time and two pages a week is all they're doing, you know, like, <laughs> I mean, so, yeah. And, and you, how long's a cover taking you? Maybe a day? Are you, are you spending a day or more than a day on a cover? If it's just like a couple of people, I could yeah. do that in less than a day. Yeah. Like from start to finish. But of course, there's the approval, there's the sketch, and then yeah, the yeah. approval for a yeah. day and stuff like that. But if it's just like, you know, my editor is right beside me, I could do a cover in like a, like a day if it's solo. But if it's like eight people, it yeah. will take, definitely take a couple of days at least. Right, right. Yeah, days. But it's all digital now, so I'm not selling any artworks. So it's, I, I think I produce better covers. Yeah. Um, and I get to rest more, so it's really worth it. Yeah. But unfortunately, you know, it's still it's almost like the digital, like the original art sales is almost double, it's almost as much as the actual page rate, or, or even more sometimes. Yeah, a lot of times. And I, I mean, I'm a, a total sucker for original art. I do love original art, and all my favorite mm -hmm. guys are are digital now, which is so sad as well. At the same time, I love that mm -hmm. it's easier for you guys, but I miss. I miss the feel of holding original art in my hands. You know, do you do you think it will become more expensive as it becomes rarer, or do you think it's just something that belongs to another time now? That uh, original art. I think it's still it's still gonna it's still gonna. I think more and more people are doing uh um digital. Yeah. So maybe traditional art will be well, the market will be 
will be uh, bigger or will, will even flourish. I think it could be, but um, we'll see. I'm not, I'm not so sure because I think I stopped doing original art because it's usually the, the, the initial sales aren't spectacular and it's the aftermarket sales that, you know, get the yes. prices blow up and the artist has nothing to do with it anymore. Right. So it just, I, I said, you know, ah, whatever, I'm just going to do good pages and just yeah. uh, forgo it. Uh, but yeah, I think it's still, it will still flourish. I think yeah. because people just like, you know, holding something in their hands. You're right. you like, even the vinyl market is still around yeah. comics. People still want to hold books and comics. So yeah. yeah. And it's, it's amazing. I mean, I went down that rabbit hole a little bit, but there's some stuff that stuff that I would have admired, even ten years ago. I think would have been quite cheap, like seventies Marvel stuff. It's just mm -hmm. prices now, isn't it? You know, so it's going to be interesting in the future as the scarcity starts to bite a little bit. Like how much yeah. art's going to go for? You know, like Steve Ditko pages can go for a hundred grand now, can't they? And oh, yeah. Gail Kane pages thirty grand, fifty grand, and everything. You know. Yeah, yeah. I just hope that it's not um, manipulated by by by. Um by some of the auction houses, you know, that would be a problem. Because I, I just uh, saw a recent uh, video about, let's say, a video game that's like an original Mario 3 or something was sold for like 50, 50, 100K or something, 200K. But it was like a wash sale. It was yeah. bought by, it was auctioned and bought by the same group of people, you know, just yeah. to, yeah. to, um, to hike up the, the, the prices. So, uh, you know, as long as the, the prices are market driven, they're discovered by the market, it's fine, I guess. Yes, yeah. Speaking of markets, I mean, the last time we spoke as well, you really get into crypto? Are you still, are you still oh, into crypto? As of you course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know we talked. Um, I own, I'm not into crypto, I'm into bit, just Bitcoin. Yeah, just I Bitcoin. Uh, it, it's, uh, this thing, I think if you look into it for long, there's a, there's a difference for sure. Bitcoin is the only, uh, commodity, uh, yeah. as that according to the SEC and the C uh, CFTC, the rest are potentially uh, securities. So right. I people should be careful. Yeah. So just uh, yeah, I'm just into Bitcoin. So so <laughs> I don't want I don't want to say if I have Bitcoin now. I just I just think it's a good idea to look into it. <laughs> I've lost all my Bitcoin by the way. Just kidding. Because <laughs> <laughs> the last thing I saw you, you said to me, like a lot of my friends say, the minute you've heard of a cryptocurrency, then yeah. it's not worth buying because everybody's heard of it by that point. You know, it's, it's always good to get in on FTX or something whenever it's just starting out. You know, just at the beginning and yeah. then steep climb. But you were always quite adamant. You always said, on a Bitcoin is the, you know that's the one that's going to stand the test of time. You know, but you. I think it's although it's had that drop it's still so much better mm -hmm. than it was when you first came in on it wasn't it you know it's you have uh, although you may have taken a bit of a hit the overall broad picture is still good for bitcoin I, because i never the first time i got into bitcoin it was uh two under 300 three three thousand dollars yeah. the first time and then the first the, uh, the week after i bought it it crashed to 1800 so <laughs> <laughs> and then but the thing is, I kept buying, so it, uh, even up to 50,000, I still, yeah. you know, 40,000, so I, no, I, I kept buying. And um, I do think every day I, I, you know, read about it and my conviction is only stronger. Mm -hmm. Although the price is, of course, you know, disheartening sometimes. I think the 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 thesis is still the same. Yeah. Um, thing, nothing really changes. If you don't look at the price, look at the news, mm -hmm. the regulations are being set up. The, it's only... It's only good news overall, in the, in, even in the whole world, right? Like even yeah. yeah, I mean, who would have thought that the uh, Congress or, your, or your, you know your United States presidents would talk about Bitcoin in 2017? It's yeah. unheard of. It's yeah. unimaginable. And yet today, it's you know everyone knows about it and stuff like that. So I think it's um, people should look into it. And it's crypto is you know it's different for me. I think mean, you know, Bitcoin is. Um, <laughs> It's how, only far, how far down the rabbit hole are you? You know, I mean, I, I listen to every conspiracy thing out there. You know, I mm. mean, do you, do you feel the fiat currencies are going to collapse, and you feel Bitcoin's where your money's going to be safer and everything? Or what, what do you think? I, 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 I'm not sure because I, you know, the, the people I listen to are also, you know, <laughs> they're 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 quite uh, on the conspiracy theory stuff. But I think the US dollar will still survive. Uh, it will be the last currency that will survive. But overall, it's still being inflated, right? the 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 circulating amount uh circulating supply of the US dollar has been created. Yeah. One third of it has just been created three years ago since COVID, right? Yeah. Uh 
Um, the the U.S. national debt is now uh, 31 trillion. It was only 23 trillion three years ago, four yeah. years ago. So those are stuff that you, you have to look out for. I don't know. I don't know the future. And but I think Bitcoin would be a definitely a good insurance policy if you have yeah. you know if you have money you know yeah at least five percent right yes yeah so <laughs> but you know for me I I went YOLO you know I just you know whatever because <laughs> I, I, I you, know. you must listen to all the things I do I'm sure as well yeah. you know where they talk about global debt you know global debt uh -huh. is is in unfathomable numbers now. To the point where the entire global market is essentially a banana republic, you know, because mm -hmm. it's money that can never possibly be paid back. It just has to pop, yeah. point, you know. And yeah, the yeah. crypto guys, they're just waiting, aren't they? Sort of rubbing their hands together because they know <laughs> this is unsustainable, you know. But at the same yeah. time, there's bricks and mortar and everything, which never quite goes away either. I mean, it can take a hit, but it always comes back as well, you know. But but you're still, even despite the last six months, or whatever, you're still still. Oh yeah, Bitcoin, yeah. You know? absolutely, absolutely, my. My conviction has been, you know, as long as it doesn't go to like one thousand dollars or something like that. <laughs> no, I, it, honestly though, as long as the Bitcoin protocol is not hacked, yeah, it's, as long as it's still working, there's no reason to, you know, to get out of it. Yeah. Um, the price is just the reflection of people's, um, you know, uh, ignorance or, or or confidence in in Bitcoin. It, yeah. Nothing to do with with the with the fundamentals of bitcoin so you know, yeah you know the greatest thing to invest in is mm -hmm. marvel 24 years ago marvel mm -hmm. 24 years ago, right? like one of my friends who i won't uh -huh. name because for, his, for the sake of his privacy he didn't have a lot of dough and he got very sick he got very sick and he was moving back in with his parents he had a brain tumor you know and mm -hmm. like uh and he, he was moving back in with his mum and dad so he could be looked mm -hmm. after and um he had some equity in his house. He had a flat that he sold and he had some some cash and he shifted mm -hmm. it to Marvel stock. And Marvel was oh. going to chapter 11 around about that time. So the, oh, stock, yeah. the stock was down at like under a dollar or something, like 80 cents or something. And wow. then when it was sold to Disney, um, it, it, it was, I think, $56 or something in 2009 when it got sold to Disney. Yeah. He, cashed, he cashed out then. So his money, his money went up by 50 or 60 times what he'd invest. <laughs> That's insane, huh? And he's, and he's wow. never had to work since. He was only in his 20s at the time, you know? Yeah. And he's never had to work. And it's like, I, 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 I've I never bought a share in my life, you know? Like, I've, I've never... Uh -huh. you know, so e like, even until now, though, do you have, a, do you have your equity account? Uh, well, I've, I've, I've got the thing now. I mean, personally, you know, I'm awful with that kind of stuff. But, like, uh -huh. you know, my wife takes care of all this kind of thing and speaks to mm -hmm. advisors and everything. Nope. But, but my eyes glaze over, you know? Like, I, I really admire <laughs> the fact... That you will sit and look at screens all day, won't you? And you're really excited by the jumping numbers. Yeah. That Whereas uh, I, find, I start thinking about Spider Man or something like that when I'm looking. <laughs> <laughs> and if a guy's oh, that, that's, talking that's, to me about it, I'm like switching off, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> but you've, you you you, you do enjoy it, though, don't you? I mean, you you actually do get quite a buzz out of it too, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's the best entertainment of my life. Even if, <laughs> if, if I if I lost all my my Bitcoin. Like if I lost, if, if it goes to zero, yeah, I would have you know, said that you know that was the most enter entertaining uh, four, five years of my life. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was. I think it's um, in my opinion, if even if it fails, it's the most um intelligent. It's it's all everything I read, all my education led me to this. Yeah, it's the right decision at this time for me. And if it fails, it fails. I, you know, I, you know, I'm, I still have my job. I still have, you know, I can work for another 15 years, 20 years. Yeah. yeah. And it, it, I need to do this bet. This, yeah. um, this, not even a bet anymore because, you know, countries are talking about it. You know? <laughs> when, when it started out, no one, you know, no one knows about it. Uh, yeah. Very few people know, know about it. Now they have congressional hearings, you know, about crypto and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah, um, I think I'm on the right track. So <laughs> there, we've hit some bumps, but yeah, you know. <laughs> what, what about, I mean, the dollar hit bumps at the beginning too, though. I mean, any new thing oh, yeah. hits bumps, doesn't it? You know? mm -hmm. But what about like next for you? You know, like, I mean, do you, you're still young, you know? I mean, like, do you still have unrealized ambition in comics, like things you really want to do uh, in terms of characters you've never drawn before or anything? Or, or do you feel, you, have you drawn what you want to draw? You know, what do you feel? Probably just uh, probably Batman, I mean, yeah. as we talked about earlier. But um, I think I think I just needed some break 
but yeah. I could still draw some. I'm like, I don't get sick of drawing Wolverine, to be honest. You know, I could I could do another Wolverine run. Right, the last time I did Wolverine was as a series was like the Hulk versus Wolverine, which was yeah. Yeah. twenty years ago. Yeah. Right, it's yeah. like almost. So you know, I don't. I I'm, I still have it in me. Um, I just like I enjoy doing covers though. It's like. I think I realize I'm more of an illustrator. <laughs> I just enjoy dr- drawing images and you know coming up with with nice um, you know, stuff like that. But um, yeah, oh, I, lo- I love your sequential part- layers. Please don't stop doing sequential layers because <laughs> I genuinely am inspired by them. And see if I'm having a tough time with a story, I sometimes mm-hmm. take your stuff out and visualize it drawn by you, like oh, wow. because I love the way you lay out a page. You know, like I'll miss it if you just do covers. I- I'd love to. See- <laughs> Well, we're we're gonna do a Batman in the future, oh, so yes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but you know, my my output has been drastic, drastically cut down recently, and I'm enjoying it. And um, thanks to you, Mark. <laughs> 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 I, I must admit, I do feel guilty when I see so many brilliant artists not working <laughs> because of this but like uh, you know what artists have been screwed over for so long and our industry haven't they? i mean guys who've created billion dollar franchises have been paid five mm-hmm. things you know so like uh so i'm I'm pleased that artists are getting paid you know i think this is what we've always dreamed of isn't it it's great mm-hmm. yeah and um a lot of us appreciate you for for sure and i'm still uh, amazed that you're <laughs> you're working <now. laughs> i mean do you know the weird thing? I, I actually come up with new stuff all the time. Like I can't, I can't stop. You know, like I come up with oh, yeah. like twenty more projects than I would have come up with ten years ago. Like I just keep thinking of stuff, and I and I get excited about it, want to do it. You know, and like I've got a Superman project and a Batman project I want to do that I wouldn't mm-hmm. be able to for about eighteen months with my uh, commitments at the moment. But like, um, I can't help it. You know, you must be the same though. Mm-hmm. You must scribble things down that you want to do and everything. You know, you must. I do. Yeah. I do have some ideas, but after a while, like most, it's mostly sci-fi stuff. But after a while, I um I I don't think I have the confidence to do it alone. I would probably need to work with 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 uh other uh writers and stuff like that. But I do, it'd be, yeah, yeah, for sure. But yeah, um, it's I I do not have the your brain though, like you know, coming up with, all, with these everything, you know. <laughs> well, I I don't have your fingers. I don't have your fingers. You know, so luckily <laughs> the two of us, we we can cobble yeah. something together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Listen, yeah, you have eighteen months with with uh, you have eighteen months with Netflix, right? So. I've actually got a little more, you know. I've got, I've got because what I'll do is I'll, I'll stay on, you know, I'll stay on and do uh, more stuff. But what I want okay. to do is be able to do some stuff outside of it. Like whenever we sold the company, part of my my setup was they wanted sequels out of me and to create mm-hmm. new stuff. Like Magic Order, I created after Netflix, you know, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, you yeah. know, um, so I created it in house and then did it as a comic later. But they wanted me mm-hmm. to do like the sequels to Nemesis and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. That's part of the mm-hmm. thing. Um, but what I'll do is I'll I'll stay on, but I want to carve out some stuff when I stay on to do mm-hmm. stuff outside of the company. Like I just really want to do Superman. Like I want to do a six mm-hmm. issue Superman thing. And I've got it okay. all worked out. I was in Dubai last year and I was swimming and the whole plot came to me when I was swimming in this oh. pool. And I came out the pool and I said to everybody, don't talk to me, you know, and I sat <laughs> for an hour and wrote everything down. And, uh, yeah, you know, so I can't let this stuff go to waste because I really am excited about it, you know. So I'll right. say to the Netflix guys, like, do you mind if I take three months and just disappear and go and do you know, the Superman project? But I, you know, maybe in a year and a half or something, I'll be able to take that time and go and do it. You know? Wow. That, that's exciting. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> so who, who do you have, uh, who, um, who do you have in mind for, for the art? <laughs> well, <laughs> we have I haven't actually thought like you guys like the, I've got wish lists of people I want to work with in the future. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely going to reduce my comic output. You know, I'll be doing a bit more producing. Uh, there's a very mm-hmm. busy year of comics that I want to do a year and a half. But then beyond mm-hmm. that, I just want to work. I mean, I only ever work with the great guys. But I would take it down to like you, Olivier Coipel, Frank Whiteley, mm-hmm. Travis Charest. Um, I, I absolutely love Matteo Scalera. You know Matteo Scalera. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, of course. That guy, yeah. You know, he's amazing. Uh, you know, just a few guys that are, are just mm-hmm. my my pals that I really like working mm-hmm. with and everything. And mm-hmm. I mean, if I can lure you from the covers to doing some interiors, <laughs> it's amazing at some point, you know. And just, like, just like maybe some new creator own thing as well, a couple of new things sure. outside of it that we all own, you know. So that'd be great. 
That would be great. Thank you for having me in my in mind, Ed. <laughs> oh, are you kidding? That's a total pleasure. And thank thanks for taking the time today. I know it's it's Sunday afternoon your time, Sunday morning my time. You know, so like, mm -hmm. uh, thanks. I know Sunday's a bit of a day off for everyone. I don't. No every, problem. Every day's a day off for you right now, Mindy. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anytime for you, man. Anytime for you. For you. Yeah, really yeah I. Uh, I hope to see you in the future as well. See, see well, you listen, again. invite you back to Manila because don't, I don't want to eat that check again. I don't want to eat that little check, <laughs> right? but but I'd love to. I mean, the guys out there are just the best people, you know. Like seven days there was just like a holiday more than a work thing. You know? oh, I loved it. We had great. such a nice time, and everybody I met was great fun, you know. So let, let's, yeah, let's, I, well, let's think of something, you know, like yeah. you promoting it a book or something well, or, do you know, or, we should do a magic order season in manila mm. and i get to work out there for six months or something that would be amazing that, we could that, do something like that just great. to engineer it you know yeah that would be great yeah. <laughs> but when jiggy hears about it he, he'll, he'll yeah. set it up <laughs> <laughs> listen great seeing you all the best thank you so much see you soon. take care take take care. Care. see you hey folks hope you enjoyed the interview just to remind you that's nightclub issue three Magic Order issue 2 and Nemesis Reloaded issue 2 all on sale in February. Uh, look forward to catching you next week. All the best then.